Welcome to Police Fire and Rush Rescue Subcommittee for December. Uh, Claire, any apologies? No apologies, Chairman. Let the members present. Thank you. Any declarations of interest? And thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody. I'd like to extend a warm welcome back to Brian Barber from uh, SPA. Uh, we always welcome his input at these meetings. It's good to see him again. Nice to see Kate Thompson back again. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, item three, uh, minute of meeting 30 to June for approval. Uh, just on the minute, in respect to decision 5.2 for a visit to be arranged to area control and govern, uh, to identify a date which does not clash with members' current committee commitments has not been possible. Therefore, a date will be set in the near future, and apologies if there are any diary clashes. Uh, that's entirely up to you, but it's a wee bit, it's a wee bit dangerous up a bit there. Then. <laughs> uh, we're expecting uh, Assistant Chief Constable Kate Thompson later in the <laughs> agenda, uh, and we were going to take item five first, but now that she's arrived and safely here, uh, we will take item four now. Uh, item four, Police Scotland Local Planning and Scrutiny Engagement Report by Director of Corporate Services. Members, oh, members are asked to note the work of Police Scotland and Local Planning and Scrutiny. Uh, Kate? Thank you, and uh, thank you for the warm welcome. It is uh, lovely to be back, I'd have to say. Um, in terms of this report, it was probably to uh, just give members an update on um, some of the arrangements nationally, but obviously um, to express appreciation uh, from my part about uh, Dumfries and Galloway um, helping with this piece of work about some of the changes we want to make to the planning arrangements. Uh, members uh, know, obviously, about the police plan that's relevant to the whole of the Division of Dumfries and Galloway, um, and that previously we had a uh, planning that focused on multi-member uh, wards only. Clearly, um, the set-up with other partner agencies working with some key areas of business in terms of drug and alcohol partnerships, health and social care, are built around uh, local scrutiny in Dumfries and Galloway around the area committees, um, which has been in a, which have been in existence for some time. Um, so at the turn of this uh, new year, in the first of April, um, the, the the local area here um, obviously agreed to um, help me out, support me with trying to change some of that planning to make it better align with the local scrutiny arrangements that you have. The plans were drawn up by um, Mike and his team, um, and I'm really grateful um, to them for taking on that piece of work. Um, we're still working our way through. You are um, guinea pigs, if I'm being honest. Um, there's two other areas across Scotland, one in the north and one in the east. Uh, the north is Aberdeenshire, who are set up pretty similarly to yourselves, as is Fife. They have seven area committee structure. Aberdeenshire has six area committee structures. Um, so my plan was to just at, at um, intervals that, that seemed about the right time is to come and uh, meet with the councillors um, specifically at the scrutiny board here just to get a sense of did that feel that it was a better way of arranging our planning and engagement and, and looking at the collective areas, um, so the four areas across Dumfries and Galloway, than trying to work up individual multi-member ward plans that we then only ever produced information on you, which was um, in terms of statistical information, but it wasn't really for one collective plan. So um, I'm probably more here to, to just listen to any council views or ask any um, questions you have. It is only the, the initial stage of it. What we want to do is constantly refine the process because in every area it's different. Um, as Councillor Syme knows, when we went to, when we had the meeting at the Scottish Police College, um, we had a colleague, a councillor from Murrayshire, who neighbours Aberdeenshire, same division, um, as in policing division, but two different local authority areas. And the councillor from Murray was quite clear that Murray is not, doesn't have sufficient 
uh, sufficient geographic size that would actually merit having an area plan, therefore multi-member ward plans better suit their local needs. So this is about having a more flexible approach to meet the, the needs. And as I say, the view from Dumfries and Galloway and my knowledge of how you operate down here is the strength of the area committee seems to be a good existing structure on which other services actually build their plans as well. So the chair it was more open to answer any questions or um, take any feedback, which I'm, I'm interested in. Uh, I'd like to welcome Michael Leslie. Well, Michael, have you any to add to that? Uh, no, there's a point I'd like to make for the chair after Kate uh, covered the paper about the future and things forward. Okay, thanks. So open up to members. Any questions for Kate? Alistair? Thank you, Chair, and may I take this opportunity to say that um, after a period of absence, I'm delighted to be back on the Police uh, Fire and Rescue Thank Committee. You you're you're yeah, very some, gracious, some sir. Um, yes, aha. Uh -huh. uh, we'll pass over the dissenting voices, if we may. Um, the, uh, I would like to, uh, if you'll forgive me, I'm, 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 I'm getting up to speed, you see, after an absence. It's always difficult for somebody in my uh, gen uh, age. Uh -huh. um, however, I would like to say, uh, ask um, uh, uh, Kate, um, currently are there any ongoing specific priorities of note in terms of uh, what is stated in paragraph 3.8 specific to Dumfries and Galloway? Uh, members, it, it hasn't actually changed significantly from uh, when I left um, about a year ago, if I'm being honest. Um, we, we have um, sporadic issues around um, violent crime. We have um, some drug and alcohol issues um, in the, the local area. And to be honest, it does tend to be those core priorities. Um, 3.8 is, is the community planning partnership. Yep. Um, so, in, in some respects, what, what I would like to get to a, a position with is that some of our overarching police planning more aligns to what members recognise in the single outcome agreement because experience across Scotland is that um, we have a police plan, but then we have priorities within single outcome agreements, sometimes which don't actually accord as well as they should. Um, Dumfries and Galloway is slightly different, um, and the reason that I know it's slightly different is because um, working with uh, Derek and his team, we actually tried to make sure the single outcome agreement priorities and the police plan priorities were not dissimilar. But I would like to actually come to a place where they're much uh, more um, aligned than they currently are just now. So in terms of Dumfries and Galloway, do we have any other priorities in terms of what we're doing? Uh, no. Nationally, um, across Scotland, all I would like to get to a position is that the SOA planning arrangements and the priorities there have a, a more natural alignment to the police plans, and more importantly, at the very local community levels, that we have a set of planning and scrutiny arrangements that better meet the collective needs of all the partner agencies um, that work within that area, whatever that looks like. Thank you, Chair. Um, just going back to your point earlier on, Kate, in relation to the, the, the local policing plan, uh, which uh, I, I believe that you're here to get some sort of feedback from us on. Um, I would be more than happy, Chair, for these plans to be related as on an area basis, because I think that would give us a better opportunity for scrutiny of the police plan itself, rather than uh, a multi-member ward plan. Because I think at the, the, the lower level, as into a, a ward plan, um, I, I don't feel we will get the, the proper scrutiny on that because, you know, you know it is diluted somewhat from, from what would be an area plan and then following on to the, the, the full regional plan, which is, uh, which is adopted by the full council. And so I would welcome that approach. Um, and I think it also gives us better opportunity to get um, officers of a higher ranking to present that at area committee for members to scrutinise and therefore possibly give us a... a, a 
a, a better inroads in possible changes or comments that we would have to take uh, higher up the line in Police Scotland. So I would welcome that. Yeah, I think I'd welcome that as well. Did Anna say that? Absolutely. Um, when it comes to the area committees, it would be the uh, local um, chief inspectors um, that you all engage with anyway. That would be the arrangement because they are the local area commander would reduce to the area committees. Um, the divisional commander would um, present to this um, um, committee. So it is about keeping that properly aligned and, and we wouldn't need to change anything there, councillor. So it would definitely be the local area commander that would present to your area board because that that is what we recognise as being the best. That's good. Any other questions? Stephen? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes a lot of sense just to try and align with what's already there uh, in terms of our area frameworks. Um, it also maybe makes it a wee bit easier on our part when we're maybe assisting and consulting the communities within the area as to their views and what should be a priority for the for the area. Um, but how does it tie in with, uh, I mean, I, I get feedback from community councils, for example, about at the very local level, um, a lot of the feedback will relate directly to, say, a, a police report for each community council, which hasn't been 100% attended at times, uh, and it sort of varies across the region or across each, each area. Um, maybe that's an avenue whereby these can feed into the, the wider area plans, but I think it would there'd be a great deal of assurance taken if that could be firmly embedded in community policing and a community police attendance at community councils. So would that be part of this piece of work to ensure that that would happen to take care of the very local uh, concerns and feedback from that sort of platform? It, it might be helpful for members to know that uh, part of my responsibility, apart from being um, responsible for local policing, uh, primarily in the east of Scotland, the geographic areas, I have a national responsibility around um, planning and engagement. Um, two relatively small words with massive uh, implications and work around it. The engagement part is the, the bit I'm working on just now, which absolutely looks to see how we can better engage through um, supporting local teams. Um, we all know the, the challenges and demand placed on local officers to respond to incidents. So what I want to do is create a way of engaging that, that shares that responsibility from um, the central group. So we are working on different engagement models um, in terms of how people want to be engaged. Some of it will be at the very local level. Some of it, um, and we've seen a really good response um, in some areas, for instance, neighbourhood watches have a fantastic network of communication. We just need to make sure that we've got the proper um, consultation documents that actually help support that so people can actually engage with us um, over a long and sustained period of time in a way that best suits them. Some of it will be face to face. Some of it will be through community councils. So. Um, if, if I can ask members to bear with me just while I try and unpick where all the networks are and how they all connect because what we're finding is a lot of the neighbourhood watches link in with a lot of other local community groups as well. So we're going to try and make sure that we make best use again of what's in place and how their preference would be to be communicated with. I totally take on board the fact that in a lot of cases um, people like the local community officers to attend. Um, and I've been in front of this committee before where um, as the divisional commander I've given that commitment. But that is with the caveat that it depends on what the demand is for their time. But if they are unable to attend to make sure that information gets to the community councils um, either in written format or at a later stage when they're able to attend, but that withdrawal would only be exceptional and because of operational demand. That's good. Ronnie? Yeah. There's been some major changes since this report was released, both uh, in Police Scotland and, and the FBA with leadership requirements. And also the First Minister's statement said there's going to be a review of both the scrutiny role and the way policing is done. So, um, I know this is the start of the term, and obviously things might come over the hill. Uh, one of the emphasis was on um, more community scrutiny. 
think way that they set this up. And it was something that was uh, flagged up by us through the, the Pathfinder process. So I'm quite pleased that we're, we're, we're looking at that. And, and I just hope that doesn't deflect everybody what's going on nationally from what's being done locally, because there's quite good work being done there. So I see this doesn't really, you know, it's, it's make peak somewhere in the future, but as a basis, it's pretty good. Chair, if I can just um, respond to that, there, there's actually an event planned which is looking at how we move forward with um, the scrutiny and also local policing arrangements. Um, Councillor Ogilvie, you're absolutely right. It, we're on a, a direction of travel that is actually hopefully um, demonstrating that we're listening to what is in the best interest of local communities. And as I say, it, it's not going to be the same everywhere. But what we have to do is slowly but surely, um, and those are the words I'm, I'm definitely using, is that as we move forward, we make sure we get full consultation. Um, Mr. Barber will be able to tell you that the SPA, there's been a, a change in, in how that um, Police Service of Scotland plan looks like, how we will start to report back to the SPA, and what it needs to do is better align and more strongly align with what the local police plans are and then what the local community police plans are. But there has to be a, a sufficient flexibility in that that meets local needs and builds with what's already there, not add another layer on the top of it. And to do that, we must, and probably from my perspective is, um, I want to make sure that when we are engaging um, with um, local communities, it's not just a, a, a number size. So if, if we say that we've consulted with um, 2,000 people, 2,000 who, from where, over what is, you know, we've got we've got quite a, an elderly population in this area. There's some people who are not IT literate, don't have access to um, some of the ways of communicating electronically. Therefore, face-to-face -face interviews and direct contact we need to do, but we need to do that in a smarter way and work with some of our other partners because some people will tell you, and particularly young people, they are surveyed to within an inch of their life. So we must work more smartly together, and that's where some of the work with community planning partners is. Um, and I'm, I'm certainly certain the national groups looking at how they develop their business as well. So in some respects, slowly and surely is because we need to move forward in a very measured way so we don't lose all the really good things that we're doing just now. But what we do is build on the good things Without, and before we switch something off, we make sure we switch something else on that actually works. There's something else I sh should have mentioned. It, within the document, it mentions the single outcome agreement uh, and, of course, the safety partnership and the strategic partnership. Single, correct me if I'm wrong, but the single outcome agreement is what councils have to deliver on behalf of the government. You've outside of that local government now, the national force. So I just wondered what real impact on the single outcome agreement through that mechanism we would have if we've got national priorities. This is about keeping people safe. That's actually what we're trying to do with single outcome agreements as well, which is improving um, our communities. And um, people being safe in that community safety for me is about improving your community. Um, so um, I definitely uh, want to see, as do um, the executive across Police Scotland is an improvement and a greater alignment between those areas of work. Because if you look at some of the, um, the, the, the thing we term the wicked social issues, you know, child protection, um, the victimisation of the vulnerable, drug and alcohol abuse and the impact that has on our communities, not just in terms of crime, but actually general well-being is horrendous. That's why we have alcohol and drug partnerships. That's why we work in partnership with, in terms of road safety, which is, I know, very close to a lot of your hearts about the number of people that sadly lose their life on the roads across some police and gallery. So it's about better aligning them to make sure that that planning is much more aligned. There will still be some aspects and some um, areas for the police that are very much about only police. But I would argue some of your main priorities across SPA and across the police plan 
relate to some of those issues that are highlighted there and they just need to, need to make sure they're put in our resources where they need to be and working in partnership in, in, a, in a stronger and more collaborative way than they've ever been. Thank you. Graham. Thanks, Chair. Um, pleased to see Kate here. She's on time. Hope she wasn't speeding to get here on time. <laughs> but but uh, no, I mean, the, the system we've got reporting, I think, at the moment is quite good. And I, I mean, they, they, they come to the area committees twice, twice a year, actually monthly, but moved on to those days, twice a year. And also in a more parochial respect of it is that we have a meeting two or three times a year with our local inspector and um, just the three local members so the multi-ward thing gets through I would back up what Stephen Thompson said the community councils like to see somebody there I know it's not always possible but they do like to see somebody there and they, they begin to feel kind of left out if nobody turns up especially if it happens two months in a row they get quite uh, aerated about it but uh, no I think and, and and your response to Ronnie Ogilvie's first uh, point, I think that's a sea change in the police, which uh, I think uh, a lot of people will be pleased to see. And uh, good luck. Chair, I uh, think uh, Mike might want to answer the, the question just round about um, attending to that community council to give some reassurance as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll take that back to Council or two um, key area commanders. And uh, get that. Yeah. Got it on, Greg. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate that, Mike, but, but it has been raised at this committee on numerous occasions after the non attendance of, of uh, the community groups at community councils. Uh, and it has always been said that we'll take that back and address it, and so far it hasn't been. So, so I really encourage you to do that. That's Greg. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just in that, that last point, I'd also like to highlight it's not right across the board, but in many areas it attends regularly. It's very well received. Uh, well, no, you know, I'm, I'm very uh, fortunate that uh, my community court will come on his holidays and his night off to the community council, which I must commend him for. And he's really appreciated for doing that. So that that will set a precedent for the rest of them. <laughs> uh, have we got any other questions, Alistair? I concur with uh, Councillor Blake, uh, um, Chairman. That normally attendance is, is good, but sometimes there is, to be fair, a problem if two community councils regularly hold their meetings on the same night. So the way around that, I suppose, is one one month one. Or one the next month, so it's, it's, it's difficult, no, but it has to be addressed, of course. Jack, just to follow up for Alistair, that we have uh, southernness and uh, hours at uh, bank end on the same night, so it's very difficult for them for that person to go to both. Can I ask the provost to take out my warrant? <laughs> southernness. <laughs> Uh, if, if that's the end of question, Mike, will you want to come back, put back in and then uh, I'll, I'll bring Brian in to say a few words about the police court. Uh, it was just to brief members on the fact that uh, Her Majesty's Inspector of Constabulary are about to undertake uh, an inspection of uh, Dumfries and Galloway redivision. They have already undertaken five reviews across Scotland. Um, we are meeting with them on Tuesday, the 8th of September, to get a feel for how, how the inspection will unfold, uh, the process that we'll go through. They're already doing their environmental scanning and have asked us for a number of documents which we have provided, and it went reasonably well thus far. Um, we're doing a number of things in the back of that, and I'll give members an update in, in due course. But as I say, this is a process. They've done five divisions already across the whole of Scotland, and they'll work their way through the rest. Um, the inspection's duty commence round about October, November. It'll run for three months. We'll get the report probably um, into the new year, February, um, because of the size of the division. Maybe we'll do it quicker than that. We'll get more information 
uh, and come back to you uh, after uh, Tuesday's meeting. But on the back of that, we've been going through a lot of reviewing a lot of what we're doing in the division, and um, we've set up a continuous improvement group. The purpose of that continuous improvement group is to look at areas of business within V Division where we think that, um, not that there's some risk, but there's room for improvement. You may recall that under the old legacy arrangements, we had a continuous improvement group. Um, so we're going to uh, bring that back. You may recall that, the, that under the legacy arrangements that there was uh, an elected member from the old police and fire committee on that group, or that we tried to get involved in the group because it's good to have representation from the local community in the form of an elected member who can listen to and, and give, give ideas and proposals as they see fit. It's not trying to undo what's getting done at this committee, subcommittee, but it's about getting a voice on there from the local community, local democratic accountability, localism. So um, I've already had a discussion with the chair, and um, we would propose that we invite the chair on to the local continuous improvement group. It's my opinion, uh, belief, that I think the inspectorate would look well on the fact that you would have local democratic uh, involvement in, in that group. It's not going to be looking at strategic issues. It's looking more at what you identify as being the tactical issues where you may, you may bring things forward. For example, um, the, the number of special constables in, in the division has reduced significantly over the last couple of years. It's how we, what, um, what plan, action plan have we put in place to uh, increase the numbers, get them back to where they were. We've talked to the chair about that. And there's, there's other things that we're looking at as well as part of that continuous improvement group. So it's to put it, you know, we're really, really keen to get the chair onto that group with us so that you look at what we're trying to do and give us any any proposal, any ideas as they see fit and can bring it back to yourselves about how it's going forward. As I say, I think it would look it would be looked on uh, pretty pretty well by the inspector and it would serve a good purpose locally. Thanks for that. I mean, we, we did have a, a, a similar arrangement before under a different uh, name but the same type of group. And I, I would welcome being part of that uh, as long as the members agree that that's the way forward. Uh, it, it just might, would, what other members, would, would you looking for any other members of this committee on that group? Or? I would take one. If we get two, even better, you know, if, if one's un unable to make it, um, as I say, it's good to sit around with the, that group contains the leadership team so you've got the divisional commander you've got the operational super the support super and the chief inspector and the header um, support staff so um, two, two would be even better um, I might get shot uh, by Andy for putting trying to get two on it for cost but that, that you know if, if we can do that all the better um, one's fine but two's great Right, further discussion uh, with the meeting, that's all right, everybody. Uh, could I bring forward, uh, Bribery, there be any uh, comments on the discussion that we've just had? Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, there have been a number of things happening today, some of which I think will come up under uh, Item 5 and the HMICS report. But firstly, I think I just wanted to welcome Kate's comments about the, the slow but sure progress. I think it's really important that we have an evidence-based um, way of progressing so that we know things are working before the things give you place to wish on. And we've had examples of that not working in the past. I'd also echo her comments about the police contribution to the single outcome agreement. Again, I think that's absolutely the right direction to go. Um, local scrutiny is really important. Local, local policing was at the heart of the Police and Fire Reform Act. And we've had examples of where that's worked very well examples where it's been less effective and uh, I know the cabinet secretary for justice has announced a governance review at a national level and uh, that's that's looking at how policing is governed nationally um, but locally we've had a number of successful events uh, community engagement events um, called partnership events and I believe the cabinet secretary will be announcing one for towards the end of September to which you chair will be invited uh, in terms of the other things, it might be better for me to wait to comment after you've had your HMICS discussion. Thank you. Right, uh, thanks for that. Uh, we've got the recommendations. Oh, carry on. I to take this opportunity under the scrutiny to ask Brian a question. Is that okay? Yeah, carry on. I'm sure Brian it's just will 
We used to have um, a complaint subcommittee, which is very effective. Um, we don't have that scrutiny role now. It's done nationally. I just wondered, does that report come to yourselves or where it goes? And we never get sight of it, so we don't know how we're comparing from a, a complaints of the police point of view. But I just, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it comes to this committee, the, 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 any of the national results. I just wondered if Brian's uh, SPA looked at that. I have brought it up with me about uh, things that were local before that have now been taken away and uh, looking at how, how we deal with that, maybe in, in the future getting some sort of role in that in the future. But, uh, Brian, have you? Yes, yes, happy to comment on that. There is indeed a, a conduct and complaints committee that the SPA operates. Um, so the SPA has oversight of police handling of complaints, um, plus the SPA has a role in handling complaints against senior officers. But the data that is published, the complaints data, is broken down by uh, division and by subdivision. That information is published on the SPA website, and there's certainly no reason why, as a committee, you wouldn't want to look at that. Um, that information is readily available to you. Yeah, I mean, this is a good point. Um, it's certainly something I, I will raise with the inspectorate. Um, and it's something I would recommend that when inspect to meet with yourselves that you raise this point with them. I think it's a very important point. Um, when they did the inspection of Ayrshire, um, one of the recommend specific recommendations they made related to this very point. So um, on the back of that, we certainly tried to give more detail to you. What, what you got in the last report, was, as far as it went in Scotland uh, thus far, as I understand it, in terms of complaints data, and we'll try and expand on that. But I, I would, I, I would recommend to you that you, this is a point you highlight because I think it's a very important thing to do with local accountability um, and localism. Um, probably the other thing that we'd maybe give the, the complaints as well is that um, we are looking at how through the scrutiny arrangements to get access to the. the who deal with that from a police perspective as well. Might, might be some of the local um, issues others are dealt with by professional standards department and their access to authors of the information that we try to get access to um, DCC. That's just some. Um, we're looking at a way uh, at which through things like this we will have access to some of these national pieces of work where the individuals will come and it won't be my students the information is being submitted you'll actually get access to the officers who are held responsible for enforcing and requiring that kind of data. So you can imagine they are not huge in number, and you can imagine they would be looking for the stakeholders of the issue. We're trying to um, have discussions just now about the most effective way that they would have some direct access at some point to them. It's looking here to actually be able to speak to them directly just trying to map that out. That will be the same for some other national data and business um, that they're in, and I probably was guilty of that when I was in parochial in terms of the information that was held by the police desk. Uh, actually, we need access to some of these national things so that we can identify them and, and get the real information that we need out of them. I think it's those kind of pieces of work that are we start to see rolling out that will hopefully make things work, because I know you you were a very strong supporter of it, and we need to be um, looking at how we can make sure that we get the right place without any kind of scrutiny that we can get to the right place. Okay. Uh, just finally, on the inspection, uh, we welcome the inspection, and uh, I would ask me if we could get a report back to this subcommittee uh, on the progress. <coughs> And uh, any support and uh, any further input that you require for this committee? Yeah, thanks very much, Jerry. I'll do that. As I say, we'll get an input from them on the 8th. We'll know the, what the program's looking like and uh, speak to Andy about getting that into the next uh, subcommittee meeting and we'll give you a clear update because by that time they'll be on us and they'll probably be on you as well. Um, they will, they, I think they will come to this meeting. Um, they may tell you they're coming, they may not, but they'll certainly appear because they do appear in uh, police briefings unannounced, etc. Right, thanks. Uh, before we go to the recommendation, I'll start with that. Thank you. You're very kind, Chair. 
let me back in. Um, took the opportunity before I came here to download the First Minister's Statement on Policing, which uh, Luke made earlier this week. And there's two interesting paragraphs, well, of interest to me. The first, a promise from the Scottish Government to work with the FTA, which I'm sure uh, will be welcomed. And the second thing was uh, local scrutiny committees will each get a chance to quiz the Chief Constable's successor as part of a programme of public scrutiny sessions an or announced by the First Minister. Uh, these will be organised across three regional groupings with two or three sessions in each region every year. I wonder if uh, that could be, how would that pan out? I wonder if Kate could um, speculate on that, or maybe you'd rather not. Uh, <laughs> three, three regions. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, there's not often that I'm stuck for words. Um, um, I think there's a thing about the practicalities of it in the most effective way, and, and probably if I was ever panned before, I'm really panned now. So it, it's too early to say. Do I think, I think it's absolutely making sure that local accountability is there and the people, uh, the, the people at the local scrutiny board have access to it, facilitating it could be quite different. But I do think we are naturally um, split, not in a bad way, into north and west. And it will be about localities. And it will be about the most favourable. And I think there will be a fairness issue as well to make sure it's not always the same people travelling. So I am quite sure we will come up with a solution that will meet everybody's needs and let you have access to um, quiz and question the chief constable on things that are very important to this committee. So, Sorry, in general, that should be welcomed, the opportunity. Okay, we now got the recommendations. Members are asked to scrutinise the performance report from Police Scotland and Policing Galloway from 1st April 2014 to 31st of March, as detailed in the appendix. Thank you, and thanks very much, uh, Mike, and Kate, for your input. Yeah. Uh, I have five on the agenda. Uh, the response to Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Constabulary in Scotland, Independent Insurance Review of Police Call Handling. Purpose of this report is to seek agreement on the Police and Galloway Council's response to HMICS Independent Insurance Review of Police Call Handling. Members will be aware of our regular scrutiny of Police Scotland and our regular discussion in respect of the control centre closure and the police. HMICS has agreed an extension to the original response date to allow the Increasing Galloway Council to submit a response today. Uh, the man that usually sits in the corner has now moved forward, so Andrew, could you read to the report, please, and then we'll go through it. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I've not got the, too much to add to the report. It, it's um, uh, the appendix there, and I'm welcoming any additions or changes, uh, and I'm aware that there has been an interim report which has been published just this morning or lunchtime very shortly, which um, I would stress that we were invited, we were uh, given the permission to submit a late response. Um, in my brief review of that, um, they'll still be doing uh, further detailed responses um, and we'll be submitting our response straight after today's lunch. Uh, any questions or additions, I'm happy to take them. The member's quite happy to go through uh, our response. Uh, we'll just take it uh, paragraph well, uh, each issue as they come up. Uh, first of all, I have elected representative raised any issues with police call handling from the public near council area. Uh, is everybody happy with the response in that paragraph there? Yeah. No amendments or additions. Okay. What are the main issues which have been raised? Uh, I'm sure you've all read it. I don't need to go through them. Is there anything anybody wish to add there or make comment on, Craig? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I, I agree with the responses there, but possibly uh, another line might be added to that in the fact that uh, certainly I, through um, my community councils and public representations to me, there has also been uh, a problem at times with the attitude of the call handlers themselves in regard to the, the questions being raised by either the member of the public or the community council themselves. 
So um, I would appreciate if there was a, a line added to that uh, in regards to that, to the attitude of some of the, the call handlers to the, the questions being raised, you know, whatever that question may be, uh, due to the fact that um, some of the responses that has been reported to me uh, is that it's uh, some of the answers coming back from the, the other end of the line is, um, oh, well, really, that's a shame type of attitude rather than, and that's not the response that we've been looking for. So I would like something like that added in, Chair, if that's possible. Yeah, I think to add on to that, uh, I mean, I've been quite often uh, told that uh, <coughs> something in a, a, a rural area, uh, the call handlers don't uh, think that it's something really important, but it's very important to the caller. Uh, so I think that's the sort of thing you get. Andrew, is there anything you can add there? That's, are we OK? Is that no, I'm, I'm quite happy to um, uh, put a sort of a, a brief description about the attitude of some call handlers um, uh, about the questions and the sort of the not interested. That's a shame. I'll, I'll word it around that sort of um, their, their um, compassion for the, the individual reporting the crime. Yeah, and I think that's something that has been widely experienced in, uh, not just for yourself, Craig. Graham? Yes, yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I've had occasion, I think, twice to call the 101 number. First time, perfect, no problem. Second time, it took me 15 minutes to get some human voice that could talk to me. And I would have to say that I was getting thrown because I was due to be somewhere else at that time. <laughs> I could always speed the but uh, the, the, the other side of that was that once that call got registered, I had a sergeant in one car and two constables in another car there within about five minutes. So that side of it, the local side was fine. It was the, it was getting, I was getting to speak to somebody that activated a local response, and and I would I would I would compliment the local people on that. But it was the it wasn't the call. The problem wasn't locally. It was at the call centre. And it took me some time to get through to somebody, but frustrated. Thanks, Graham. Any other comments in this paragraph? I think that might be covered elsewhere. No, no, sorry, um, I think that's a, a valid point. I'll, I'll put a reference to varied response time. Um, I think it's a, it's a national issue which has come through, and there's, there's lots of statistics. And I know at the previous meeting it was referenced about the, the average time, but what we've got to take into consideration is that not always the average the average is there's a top line to it and a bottom line to it so i'll put in a, a line about varied response time thanks uh on the third one has police call handling of 999 and 101 calls been raised within your local scrutiny engagement committee i think the answer for that's about yes <laughs> any other comments to add to that Okay, and as, what issues were raised with Police Scotland and how were these addressed? I know this is a bigger stretch, but has anybody got anything they'd like to add to that or bring up? Okay, so with the, the minor amendments there, is Craig? Just as a, a general point, um, uh, covering all of our responses, Chair, um, uh, I, I agree with the, the responses that, that we are going to be submitting here, um, as I and the sure many of other members have experienced these issues through by the community councils or public representation to us. However, I think that we should be stronger in our comments um, to emphasise the issues that uh, caused to us in our rural environment, shall we say. And uh, I think the wording could possibly be stronger on some of the comments that we put through just to, to get that emphasis through that because of the rural situation we are in, um, some of these situations cause us possibly more difficulties than, than other areas. So, so if, this, uh, if, if the committee agrees, then uh, I would be happy for us to try and strengthen our comments going forward in that respect. Um, however, I do welcome the announcement today by the, the government to review um, these and, and other issues raised uh, through Police Scotland. Yeah, just another point to bring up, Matt Craig, and then I'll bring in Brian. Um, 
I have had occasion of something that I've never ever experienced in Dumfries and Galloway that uh, a constituent was told that we don't bring officers out to these things these days, but I'll give you a number for your insurance. And I know in the past that's maybe happened elsewhere, uh, but I, I think it's uh, people want to see somebody coming out to maybe for your car stolen or somebody crashed into you or broke into your house. They, they don't want an insurance number, they want to investigate it. And uh, uh, that, that was quite a, a, a big issue for me. And, and I wouldn't like to see it repeat it. And I don't know if it has been repeated elsewhere, but it's quite scary when we, we kind of get a, a police representation coming to your call. Uh, that's right, I'm going to bring in uh, Brian. Would you like to come in now and comment? And I know there's been uh, news today of the, the call handling situation as well. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Just a couple of updates. As, as was mentioned earlier, HMICS is a registered use case incident report into call handling following the tragic events in the M9. And uh, they've put then the input that you're providing today will actually be forwarded back to their consideration for their final reviews with the Chief Justice of Government at the end of October. Um, but fundamentally, the HMICS interim review says that we should continue to plan, or Police Scotland should continue to plan with the strategic direction for call centres and that they should accelerate uh, the completion of Dundee, but they should pause any further legacy closures until the situation has been stabilised. And what the SPA is looking for Police Scotland to do now is bring forward a revised timeline and a revised plan uh, for scrutiny of the costs, resources, etc., um, that we can discuss. Coming specifically to a comment about call handling time, um, for the last two months now, the SPA has conducted a weekly review with Peace Scotland, so we have weekly reports on call handling times for 101 and 999 calls, and they have been showing an improving trend. But I think an important point that uh, one of your colleagues made earlier was it isn't just about speed of response, it is about quality of response. So it's really important we don't just focus on the, the time to answer, we do focus on the quality of the interaction with Peace Scotland. That's all we'd have to say on the HMICS thing, Chair, although there are a couple of things I'd like to add. Thanks, Ryan. I'll, I'll bring you back in. Uh, are we okay to go to the recommendations? Are there any other points to make, Ronnie? Just ask a question. The further review that's been announced, will, you know, points it's taken, we're sending this submission in, but will they come out and spot, speak to this scrutiny committee? Will there be a sample of them? Or how is that going to work? How can we feed back into the the new review. Could, could I, it's not a new, a new review, this is an interim report. Um, HMICS's plan has always been to produce a final report, so this is just another stage. They had committed to the government that we produce an interim report by the end of August. So the fact that they've agreed a, a timeline for an extension for the number of local authorities means that they will take account of that. And they're certainly doing extensive consultation. I know they did a an online survey and they got something like 2,000 responses from about a month ago, half of which came from police officers and staff and from external MPs. Okay, thanks. Let's go to the recommendations. Members are asked to review and agree the appendix as the Depression Galloway Council response to the, the HM Inspector of Constabulary Scotland Independent Assurance Review of Police Call Handling. Read. Yeah. I uh, subject to the amendments uh, Thanks, Reid. Uh, that, that's uh, the end of business for the day, but uh, Brian would like to bring up a, a couple of points.